This was one of the first Qi2 battery packs on the market. This thing still cooks. To find out what this year's best Qi2 wireless battery pack is, I bought 20 plus of them, tortured the USB-C port, melted my iPhone by doing wireless charging sprints, reviewer, not influencer, and also I had to figure out how to do some coding in order to drain the packs in iPhone consistently. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour, 38.5 watt hour capacity power bank. It has two PDOs, which is very, very low and no PPS charging rates. It has one USB-C port, a kickstand, but it's one of the very few products with this. They call this a smart display. It'll tell you if it's discharging or recharging as well as the uh, time left. Now in terms of voltage accuracy and stability, this thing wasn't great. It's not very often an Anchor product is uh, average. Now my real world capacity test, I managed to pull 23.4 watt hours out of the pack. Doing that capacity test for this product was painful because at max rate, this thing would overheat at 45 degrees Celsius. Now we know, but no device is pulling max rate like I do. I stress test these things, which is, yeah. That's just what I do. In my recharge testing, I only managed to put into this battery pack 36.6 watt hours in about two and three quarter hours. Those are very average charge times. What is surprising to me is that Anchor says this pack is 38.5 and I can only put in 36.6. It's not very often my recharge tests come in lower than the stated values. So when it comes to efficiency, for every 23.4 watt hours we pull from the bank, we have to put 36.6 watt hours into it, which results in an efficiency of 64%, which is a tiny bit above average. Now when it comes to a Qi Chu charging, this thing was an absolute banshee. On average, I got around 36, 37% in 30 minutes or 5.5 watt hours. That is really good. So in order to give the iPhone around five watt hours of charge in 30 minutes, the battery pack has to give out 6.4 watt hours. And that efficiency works out to 80%, which is just incredible. But here's the crazy part about this product. Despite being very good at wireless charging, this thing ran very, very cool. For both wire charging and discharging, it capped off at 46 degrees Celsius. You may have heard me complain about the size of this product in previous videos, um, but I guess that's why it's so big, because it's just a cooling machine. In terms of size, this thing weighs 255.4 grams. It's pretty bulky on an iPhone. The finish of the product isn't too bad. It's plasticky and kind of greasy if you uh, look too hard. This thing comes with a kickstand. It's pretty substantial, unlike some of the other ones that I've tested, which makes the uh, iPhone a little more stable than other products. Here's its biggest shortfall. When it comes to magnetic attachment strength, it comes off when you push it at 7.8 newtons. That's one of the lowest. And the pull is only 23 newtons. So this might happen with your iPhone. It comes off a little too easy from my perspective. In terms of price and value, this thing's gonna set you back a whopping $130. Not the most expensive in my collection though. That belongs to this guy. But with this product, you get above average uh, wireless performance and you get a kickstand. Would I get it if I wasn't a reviewer? If you can afford it, absolutely. If you're looking for a fast bank, then this one is definitely it. This thing is number nine out of 20 and it's the fastest in the group so far. I'm on a mission to figure out what the best accessories are for our tech. Um, so if you're planning on getting this product, Make sure you use my links. I'm a reviewer, not influencer. Anchor's not paying me to make this video. I just want to, again, figure out what the best accessories for our tech car is. Thanks for watching.